what I was taught by my teacher was Zazen, so-called Zen Buddhism, and that tradition in Japan uh, started by Zen Master Dogen or Dogen Zenji, and we call that tradition as uh, Soto Zen. And the main point of Dogen's teaching was just sitting. Uh, we usually think this meditation practice is to attain some kind of enlightenment or awakening, but Dogen said we should just sit without any expectation, even enlightenment. Because we practice in order to get enlightenment, then that is desire. Desire or egocentric desire is still working there in search of truth. So uh, from the very, very beginning, we just, in Dogen's expression, throw ourselves into the way w without expecting any reward. That is what uh, is called just sitting or shikantaza in Dogen's teaching. My teacher's teacher, Sawaki Kodoro, she said, Zazen, this sitting meditation, is good for nothing. I always said, you know, this is good for nothing. <laughs> and that is what I recommend people, and it's really difficult to uh, encourage people to practice this way, because this is good for nothing. <laughs> Zazen, without expectation or without uh, gaining mind, or Zazen, good for nothing, uh, is a co kind of a koan. Because even I, when we started to practice, we have some expectation. I think almost always when, because we have some problem or some difficulty or some question, we start to practice. And so without expectation, at least to find some answer to question or exit from the problem I have, I, I'm facing. So, uh, without expectation or goal, we cannot start to practice. Here is a, a kind of a, a conflict. We usually call this a way-seeking mind. And with, without this way-seeking mind, or in Buddhist uh, term, bodhicitta, uh, the mind which seeks uh, awakening or find, discover the truth. Uh, we cannot start to practice. But the teaching is you should not even expect the answer. So here is a, a conflict. When we, start, we continue to practice, this becomes a really a serious question. And uh, sometimes we have to face the dead end. That um, in my case, uh, I uh, reached that dead end after about ten years. I after I became a monk. That means, you know, I knew you know that is good for nothing, and I felt it very. I was very fortunate to that teaching. That why I started to practice in that style. So I thought I understood and I liked it. Therefore, I devote my entire body and mind and time uh, to this practice. Uh, but after uh, 10 years, I found uh, that was uh, when I was in Massachusetts. We worked very hard physically. So when I became 30, my body was half broken. <laughs> in my 20s, that was okay. But after, uh, shortly after I became 30, my body was half broken. <laughs> so, uh, and I didn't have, you know, uh, income to have a treatment. So I had to return to Japan. So I couldn't practice in the way I did for 10 years. And I had a problem. <laughs> I questioned, why is it a problem if that is good for nothing? And I looked inside of me and I found that, you know, my understanding, understanding of that is good for nothing is only understanding. But I, deep in my heart, I think 
you know, to practice good for nothing zazen is the more, most authentic practice in Buddhist tradition. That's why I'm okay. <laughs> That's why my life is meaningful. I really found in deep my uh, mind, I had expectation. And I felt my ex expectation was filled because of good for nothing doesn't. And I had a problem when I went back to Japan. I, I couldn't do, do that anymore. And that is one thing that means that means good for nothing is only my intellectual understanding. So I devoted my entire body and mind based on my thinking. It's not really good for nothing. That is one thing I found.